Christine, and welcome to Storm Frieza 8 this month. Off the hook, but the phone never rang. Beast on the beat, no claws, no fang. The show where I review all the books, movies, and pop culture shit I've been digesting over the last six months. It's been a very long time. I have a lot to talk about. I watch a lot of things, so you don't have to watch all the things. You can watch the good shit and read and read the good. I read a lot of things too. It's been a while. Let's jump right into it. First things first, I just finished our March book explosion book of the month. This month we're working with Disney books. That is The Rumor Game by Danielle Clayton and Sonia Cherapotra. This is a very Pretty Little Liars gossip girl thriller vibe that takes place in high school. And it's all about how a small lie of a rumor can snowball and ruin someone's life and ruin other people's lives around you and how the rumor machine in high school just really never ends. We have three leading ladies in the rumor game and they all have different relationships with each other. They all have like different places in the school hierarchy. It takes place in Washington DC at this really elite prep school. So they're all very well off. Their parents are all celebrities or like important people in politics. One of our lead characters is Bryn. She has a politician for a father. She wants to be a politician. She ended up doing something kind of wild because she was in a really bad place. And then a rumor came about as to why she did what she did. And it's not actually the reason why. And it's kind of ruined her social status. Her best friend is the cheerleading captain and she's not talking to Brynn anymore. Her boyfriend was seen going into the bathroom with another girl and rumors are flying about them hooking up and it's just it's a web, a giant web of rumors. It's a deep dive into that mentality in an entertaining way. It tackles a lot of hard subjects. I flew through the audiobook. It's fantastically read. It's a full cast. Highly recommend the audiobook. And because is our book explosion book of the month. We are going to have a live show discussion on the book explosion channel April 2nd at 6 p.m. EST. I'll leave a link in the description to our channel if you want to join us. You still have time to pick up the rumor game, read it, and chat along with us live. Link to grab the book is also in the description. So the last movie I had, the last movie that I have attempted to watch was Fresh, the new Sebastian Stan movie on Hulu. Now, I went into this blind. I knew it was like a horror thriller about dating. I don't know what I expected. I did expect like a cannibal aspect, but it was so much worse than I ever imagined. <sighs> I don't know if you watched it. I couldn't finish it. I got 35 minutes in and I wanted to die. I couldn't handle it. If you want to mute me right now, I'm going to tell you the basic premise and I'll put down my hand when I'm done. It's about a dude that lures women back to his place, drugs them, chains them up, and then he keeps them alive as long as possible while he slices off pieces of them and sells their meat on the internet. Okay? He sells their human meat. It like tastes like... 25 minutes to half an hour to get to the point where we learn this. And you know, I love a thriller and I thought maybe he was gonna be a cannibal and I was like, you know, she's gonna escape and it's gonna be fine. But then I, then I, then I, then I, then I learned the, the real thing that he's like fucking selling their fucking parts. I'm gonna give it a D cause I can't watch it. Next. This isn't really a story, but like I just recently got to dress up as Holly Quinn from The Suicide Squad. My friend recently got married and it was a costume wedding. It was a really good time and I don't think I've actually reviewed The Suicide Squad since I finished it. But now that I have finished it, I just want to say I had a really fun time with The Suicide Squad. It took three watches for me to get through it. It's a lot! So you have to be like mentally prepared for the zaniness. I'm gonna give it a B plus, The Suicide Squad, I think. Previously, maybe I gave it a little less than that because again, I fell asleep. Let's talk about A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, the trilogy, okay? I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Good Girl, Bad Blood, which are the first two in the trilogy in the beginning. And when I say beginning, I mean at the end of 2021. And I loved them, loved them, okay? The audiobooks were excellent. So like the first book, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I'm gonna give that an A++++++. And then the second one, A Good Girl's, no, Good Girl Bad Blood, I'd give an A. And then we have the third book, As Good As Dead. The books are about a girl in high school in this town where there was a murder like I think 
nine years ago or so, there was a murder and someone went missing. And there are two different people. And the person that went down for the murder, there's not much proof that they actually committed the murder. And our lead character, Pip, decides that for her, like, cap project, they have to do this big senior project, she is going to try to prove that the person that went down for the murder, this guy's brother, didn't actually commit the murder. Boy, does she get involved! <laughs> it's just, it's so much fun and also really scary how involved she ends up getting in this case. Obviously the case is reopened and at the end of the book she decides to start a podcast with all the recordings that she has from her project that she used to try to prove that this person that went down for the murder wasn't the actual murder. Then we have book two, which I don't have in physical form yet because I listened to the audiobooks and I can't find book one, which I did order and have in physical form and I don't know where the hell I put it. Here it is, good girl. Bad blood. Holly Jackson is a legend now that I finished this trilogy. I really want to meet her. Anyway, they're excellent. So I read the second book. It was great. Not as good as the first one. I started the third book. It's pretty dark because by this time, Pip has gone through some serious shit. And it's, it's, it's traumatizing. <laughs> She's dealing with all this PTSD. So I was reading it very slowly, okay? I started this at the end of last year and I had to take a break. I knew it was gonna pick up, but I didn't know when. I didn't know how dark we were gonna get. And then I started listening to it again a couple of weeks ago. It was wild. I couldn't put it down. It's so good. This trilogy has shot up into like my top three trilogies of all time. This is so good. I can't wait to see what she writes next. I've been debated doing a book talk, but I was on deadline when I was finishing this, so I could not take the time to record. I've debated doing a lot of things. I just, I never have a tough time. I want to make so many things and I don't have enough time to do it. Yeah, so I laughed, I cried, I yelled. I was just yelling so much into the ether as I read this book. I just couldn't, I just, I couldn't. Like I couldn't handle it. It was so good and I was just in my house doing laundry and like yelling. <laughs> oh my, I love the love interest. I love Ravi so much. Again, shout out my book boyfriends list. Ravi is faux show sure up there in the top 10, probably above Edward Cullen. In so many trilogies, the author has a hard time sticking the landing because either you're trying to fit a story that's really big into a trilogy or you're trying to expand a smaller story that is small into a trilogy, but this was like the perfect fit. Once you get to here, you realize that she laid all the breadcrumbs the whole way through. Next, I just watched season four of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. What? Stop. I just watched season four of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. If you've been here for a while, you know that I am a huge fan of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It did not disappoint. It was excellent, okay? But there were only eight episodes. So I'm gonna give it an A instead of an A plus because I for sure thought there were gonna be 10. So I watched the eighth episode and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so excited for next week. It's gonna be the finale. Cause it felt like we were leading up to a finale. And then it just was over. This has been happening to me a lot lately, like in two other shows that I'll, I'll go right into after this. It was so happy making and exciting. And I was so and proud of Mrs. Maisel and also like eager for her to just take that take that last step of character development so we could have a grand finale then it was over after eight episodes now I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna plow right in okay the another show that was like this Yellow Jackets. I watched Yellow Jackets. I loved Yellow Jackets. I got obsessed with Yellow Jackets, okay? I made a TikTok about it. Like I, I was just, all I could think about was Yellow Jackets. It's the first show that has a Lost-like structure and Lost-like kind of template that almost lives up to Lost. It's really, really great. And it sets up the season with a really great pilot. And then we get to the last episode of the season. I think there are 10 episodes and we don't come back to what they set up in the first episode. You can't do that. You need to give us the satisfaction of what happened in that first episode by the last episode of the season or else we will be pissed as an audience, okay? You can't set something up and then drag it through another season. Set something else up that will come through to the next season, but not the main thing. Okay, it's still excellent. You still have to watch it. I'm gonna give it an A instead of an A plus. Like both of these series have lost their pluses. It feels like the new thing for a series to like drag out the mystery or like the arc of season one 
to the next season. It's just, it's just extremely unsatisfying to do that, okay? It doesn't feel good. You want a complete arc in a season. Another show that did this, The Witcher season two. The Witcher season two had like a slow build, okay? Episode eight was great. I was so excited for episodes nine and 10. <laughs> there were none. There were no episodes nine and 10. You just got me so invested and you didn't give me the end of the rainbow. You, no. So The Witcher, not as good as season four of Mrs. Maisel, not as good as Yellow Jackets. I'm gonna give it like a B plus. And maybe it would have had an A minus if there were two more episodes. It got to like here. Whereas like Yellow Jackets got to here and not here. And Marvelous Mrs. Maisel got to here. Not here. It was half of the season. It was half. Ah, I watched season two of Love is Blind. You know what I realized? That I don't remember if I realized, I must've realized this when I was watching the first season. There are, they get the 14 contestants all from the same city, which I guess definitely raises the chances of them finding something that will actually work out because they're all from the same area. So they're like not having to do long distance post show, which is interesting. The show is addictive and I love love. Okay, I'm rooting for these people. It's such an interesting experiment to see like what couples are still together a year later. I can't wait for them to do a reunion to see if the, like the couples that are together are still together. I'm gonna give it like a B plus. I was completely addicted though. I read Here's to Us by Adam Silvera and Becky Albertalli. I just talked about this a little bit in my past video. I absolutely loved it. This is the second book in a duology. The first one is called What If It's Us? So sweet. It's a rom-com. It's a happy maker, full show. I watched Taylor Tomlinson's Look At You, her second Netflix special, and I loved it. Her first one was called Quarter Life Crisis. It's like she's speaking to me when she makes it. She just, she says a lot of things in ways that I have thought them, and it's hilarious. Highly recommend. There probably are some trigger warnings for certain topics if you wanna look those up for yourself. I'm gonna give it um, an A+. <laughs> the next book that I read was XOXO by Axio. I read this via audiobook, but I would actually recommend doing the actual physical book, but there was a shortage when I needed to read it because it was one of our books of the month. I really, really loved it. It was so cute. It's about this young girl who's a cellist. She lives in Los Angeles. One day she's at her uncle's karaoke bar and she meets this dude. They hit it off. They bond over different things that they've been through. And then he is from Seoul, South Korea. So then he goes back to Seoul. Jenny's grandmother is sick and her mom is gonna have to go to Seoul for five months. And it's Jenny's senior year of high school, but she wants to go to Seoul with her. <laughs> so she does, and she ends up attending this prestigious music art school in Seoul. And guess who else goes there? The guy that she met. And turns out the guy that she met is in a famous K-pop band called XOXO, not K-pop band, K-pop group. I am still not like, super in the know about K-pop. So, so if I say anything wrong, it's because I'm K-pop dumb still and I apologize. <laughs> He's in a K-pop group called XOXO and they're going to the same school and they're in the same grade. And it's so much fun because I didn't know this, but like K-pop stars are not allowed to have significant others. It like ruins their reputation. And obviously she gets there and they don't immediately have a relationship, but they both like each other and he, can't show that outwardly or else he'll ruin everything for the group. And it creates this really interesting dynamic and everyone at the school, it, oh, it's just so much fun. I mean, it's, it's a study abroad novel. I'm a sucker for a study abroad novel. I don't know if you know, my book is a study abroad novel. I can't miss an opportunity to plug, this is my book again, but better. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Okay, and their relationship is so cute and I had so much fun and I can't wait for XOXO to become some sort of like, I was gonna say some sort of rom-com. I meant like, I can't wait for XOXO to become a movie or a limited series, cause it's gonna be great. Like this is cinematic shit and I'm excited. Next, the next movie I watched was I Want You Back. It's on Amazon Prime and I loved it. It's like 
my favorite rom-com that I've watched in a long time. And I feel like it's not your classic rom-com leads because usually you have like these classically beautiful hot people as your leads. And I'm not saying that these people aren't beautiful, but they're not, you're like classically beautiful. They're like different. They're the people that usually end up being like the best friend and they get to shine so hard. And I want you back. It's the woman who plays John Ralphio's sister <laughs> and the guy from Always Sunny, Charlie something. All right, Charlie Day, I was close. And Jenny Slate, I wanted to say Jenny, but I didn't know if her character's name was Jenny or if her real name was it. Also, Jane from Jane the Virgin is in this movie. It's got a new modern feel to it and it's so self-aware and so f***ing funny. I laughed out loud so much. I'm gonna give it an A+. What a fun two hours I had. The next movie that I saw was The Bat. Man. Batman with Robert Pattinson. Edward Cullen as Batman. There's just such a hard Edward Cullen vibe in Batman. He sounds like Edward Cullen because Edward Cullen is American and emo. And so he's doing his American emo voice and that's Edward Cullen. Like Natasha and I looked at each other and we were like, yeah, I don't hear Batman, I hear Edward Cullen. I had so much fun watching it. But Dark Knight is perfection. Like that's a perfect film for me. So that's like, the bar I'm holding all Batmans to from now until eternity. And it wasn't there for me. It was for some people, but not for me. It was a little long. This was like a lot of detective work. It was like a thriller and I enjoyed that, but I wanted some more character moments. And we got just like a lot of Bruce being like this instead of being a person. I loved all the parallels between him and Edward. Like when he was stalking Catwoman from the window, it's like, this is Edward would do. This is so Edward Cullen. I think I'd give it a B plus. Like it was good. Oh, I don't want to forget to talk about Zoe Kravitz, who was amazing as Catwoman. Their chemistry was glorious. Like those were the highlights for me. If it was a rom-com Batman, I think this would be like up there with the Dark Knight maybe. I want a rom-com Batman. I want Batman where it focuses on him and Catwoman falling in love. The next movie that I saw was the adaptation, the film adaptation of The Sky Is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson. This book, I don't know if you've read it, uh, Jenny Nelson is just a spectacular writer and her book, I'll Give You the Sun, is one of my favorite of all time. She's one of those authors where you read the book and you're like, why try writes when Jenny Nelson write perfect words? It's about a young girl who's lost her sister and her journey through that grief. So the movie is about that, obviously. There's never a point where it gets so low that you're just like so, so down when you're watching it because there's these bits of magic that pop into the scene every so often. And the cinematography and like the color palette are beautiful. It's just all so bright and full of life. Every shot, like the set design is amazing. I read Colleen Hoover's new book, Reminders of Him. This? is definitely one of Galeen's sadder novels. By the end of it though, you've been on such a journey with our lead, Kenna. We're in a really sad place in the beginning and we watch her grow and go on this journey and it's very, it's a, it's a beautiful journey. It's intense. I want another book. I want to see that this could easily be a duology, easily. Like this is a story that I'm like, I need the second half now. When it ended, I was like, Colleen, no, no, no. No, 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 I need, I need the next book. I need another, we need more, please more. In Reminders of Him, we explore motherhood a lot. We explore grief, coming of age, and like finding yourself, but in a, like a very different way than we have before. The next thing I watched was Marry Me, the J-Lo Owen Wilson rom-com that came out on Valentine's Day. And I know what you're thinking, you don't see them together. But is that what you're thinking? Because I don't think anyone saw them together. I don't know, it just works. The movie is so sweet and it looks like such a wild, ridiculous concept, but they do it so well. And it feels very classic rom-com. That aspect of it was so nostalgic. A lot of times now you'll watch a rom-com on a streamer and it'll feel rushed. I, it, it feels like everything happens so fast fast, like the pacing kind of is off a lot of the time. Yeah, I didn't really see Owen Wilson with J-Lo, but like they're both so good at what they do that like it worked and I got all like the little fuzzy feelings. Did it give a 
I'm like, I want to say I minus. Yeah, I'm gonna give it an A minus. What the hell? Oh, I watched the after party on Apple Plus this past month and loved it. It is a murder mystery. Like, think how to get away with murder. No, that's not what I'm thinking. Murder only murders in the building, but like, not like that at all. Think Clue, but like more grounded with like a great comedic cast. It's a murder mystery, like someone gets murdered and it's a high school reunion after party. Each episode is told from the point of view of someone else who was at the party. It is so funny and so clever, especially like the first three episodes they got released together. The thing is, it's funnier if you watch this all in one go. You want to remember everything that every person said in their story. Highly recommend watching them all together, especially the first two. I don't know everyone's name, but I know other characters they've played, so excuse me. The guy, <laughs> um, Zac Efron, not Zac Efron. That lady who's in, <laughs> I can't remember anyone's name. Okay, here's the, here's the poster. You recognize all those people. Highly, highly recommend A plus to the after party. I have been watching Superstore this past couple months. I am now on season three. My ship is finally coming to surface. Been a ride shipping Jonah and Amy on Superstore. Season one is a little like, you know, it's finding its footing, just like any comedy. And it just gets funnier as you go along and get to know the characters more. And season three has been prime. <laughs> so I give season one a B plus and season two an A minus and season three an A. And that's what, oh, that's beautiful with the show. I can't wait till my ship sails, it has to. So I, it's not a spoiler, it has to sail. It's just, it's just the fact of storytelling life. I started watching Survivor Australia on Paramount Plus. I think they've since disappeared, I haven't checked. I watched season four and it's such a good season. It's amazing. So I had never watched Australian Survivor, but I've watched 42 seasons of American Survivor. Australian Survivor is 50 days, whereas American is 41. It's for half a million dollars in Australia, but in America it's a million dollars. And it's very much feels like early survivor in all the best ways. Wow, there's just so much on my list. I'm gonna start speeding up here. I watched The Eternals on Disney Plus finally. It was fine. I didn't hate it like some people, but I didn't love it like other people. Jon Snow wasn't in it enough. I was, I was sold that he was gonna be in it. You know what, I've already kind of forgotten it. <laughs> it was fun, but then they killed off one of the best characters. I'm gonna give it a B. I saw Licorice Pizza, which had really great characters, but it kind of, it didn't have a solid arc. It was kind of like, where are we? going. But the acting was phenomenal and the two leads were so charming. I was just completely enamored with both of them. I would have cut 20 minutes off of it. I watched Don't Look Up with Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence. It's on Netflix and Timothy Chalamet is also in it. A lot of people are in it. It was good. It was very much a mirror of all the worst aspects of America. And sometimes I feel like it was a little too on the nose. It was good, but it was sad. Like, I was just very like, oh, I already knew all these things and it's sad to see it portrayed. And <laughs> I think I'll give it a B. I watched season two of Emily in Paris, blew through it. That was fun. I'm gonna give it a B. It was not as good as season one. I, I, but it was, it was a time, you know? It was, it's like, it's silly, but it's a fun silly. And I enjoyed myself. To a point. <gasps> get back! Get back to where you once be. The, the Beatles documentary on Apple Plus was phenomenal. It feels like you're watching a vlog of the Beatles making their album together. It's magical, especially if you like the Beatles and you know the music. Like, I've grown up with this music all around me, but I've never, like, seen the Beatles sing it. So I didn't know who was singing what part, who did what. It's so good. It is very long, so I did watch it over a long period of time, but I really, really enjoyed it. I felt completely immersed. It's unlike any other documentary I've ever watched. It's not like a documentary where like it's being narrated for you and they're telling you a story. Like you get the story through being there for the whole ride. Gets an A. Definitely gets an A. I watched King Richard with Will Smith on HBO Max and it was so Good, it's about Serena and Venus Williams 
dad who had to work really, really hard to get them the coach that they needed to go pro. And it's his story getting them to that point. Just gave me so many emotions, so many happy feels. Just highly recommend King Richard. A plus, it was on my top five movies list this year. It was so good. Again, like Venus and Serena were these icons when I was really young and I didn't know anything about their story, only that they were such good tennis players. It was so cool to learn like how they got to that point. <gasps> the sex lives of college girls. We haven't talked about the sex lives of college girls, Mindy Kaling's new show. I love everything that Mindy Kaling does. She's amazing and this is her newest project and it was no different it was so good it's on hbo max hbo max is killing it with the content you'll watch it all in like five seconds i can't wait for season two it's so funny and gives you all the feels i the girls are amazing watch the sex lives of college girls a plus. I watched the Hating Game movie. I rented it. I feel like I rented it on like Amazon. It's probably available on a lot of platforms. I haven't read The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, but obviously I've heard amazing things forever. And the movie came out and I was like, I'm gonna watch it. I enjoyed it, but I don't know. I didn't think the actor had chemistry with Lucy that played the love interest. He just felt a little disconnected to me. I think the movie was well written though. And like, I really think it's just about like that actor just didn't have the chemistry with Lucy. I just didn't believe them together. I believe Lucy, but I did enjoy myself. I'm gonna give it a B plus. I watched Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings finally on Disney Plus. I loved our two lead characters played by Simi Liu and Aquafina, they had amazing chemistry. Like anytime they were bantering, it was amazing. Like the opening sequence with the bus, was that the opening sequence? I don't know. Any sequence where they were together was so great. Squid Game, I watched Squid Game, top notch, A++++, like Hunger Games feelings. It did it so well. It's like 110% on Rotten Tomatoes, Hunger Games feelings. Watch Squid Game, it is on Netflix. It is excellent. I feel like everyone's watched it by now. Like it was a phenomenon. You, you season three was phenomenal. Oh my God. Like season two was like a B and while well, season one was an A, but season three was A plus. That shit had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. It was so good. Only Murders in the Building. I watched that as it came out week to week on Hulu. And while it was, really cute and clever. I just didn't feel as attached to it as everyone else did. Everyone was raving about it, but I just didn't love it as much. It, did, it was very lighthearted take on murder stuff. I like that the way they did that better in the after party. I, I'll give it a B. I watched Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds. Very much enjoyed it. I'm gonna give that an A minus. It was so fun. It was very funny. It was very clever. I watched Sex Love Goop season two, I think it was. And I watched this because I listened to Gwyneth Paltrow on Armchair Expert. And as soon as they started talking about what this season was about, like it's about women's relationship with sex and how the patriarchy has programmed us as women to think about sex. Honestly, it was so eye-opening and I really, really enjoyed it. They follow six different couples and they each see a different sex therapist and work through different psychological, you know, issues with their sex lives with these different therapists. And it was really, really good. I'm gonna give it an A. I watched Love Hard on Netflix. This was a rom-com with Nina Dobrev. And it was one of those that felt kind of like wonky in terms of the pacing, but it was fun. It was like one of those like kind of bad, but like fun bad Christmas movies. I'm gonna give it like a B minus overall, but I enjoyed myself. And then finally, oh my gosh, I've gotten to the last thing on the list. And that is the other two on HBO Max. This is a comedy and the premise here is that like, there's these two older siblings and their youngest sibling is like Justin Bieber. He just got famous. He went viral on TikTok or YouTube. It's one of those comedies that it's funny, but it's kind of depressing because sometimes like it's real. Like sometimes you see something and you're like, oh God, it's so depressing that like what they're making fun of right now isn't like an exaggeration. This actually happens in the Hollywood bubble and it's really sad. It got to me because I'm like in this bubble and I've seen some of this shit happen. And at, at times I'm like, 
This is just depressing. And the other two, so his siblings are really struggling with their lives and he's blowing up and getting really famous. And it's the, it's about the siblings like trying to find themselves and get on their own paths while this is all happening to their brother. I just, I want them to succeed. But then you, at times you see them like turning into these Hollywood stereotypes from being around these Hollywood people so much. And then it gets really sad. You're like, oh, they're succeeding, but like they're turning into horrible people. And then they realize and like, oh God, I'm turning into a horrible person. I don't know what to think of it. I'm going to give it a B because I'm like, I got to see the next season. I want to see them succeed and not be horrible people. I have read other things, I feel like, but I've talked about them in other places now, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Those, ladies and gentlemen, were all the books, movies, TV shows I have watched in the past six months. I'd love to hear if you've watched any of these, what were your opinions? What is your favorite thing that you've watched in the past month, read in the past month? Please share in the comments. My name's Christine. I'm Addict Scene May on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. That they all match. Addict Scene May. Please go follow me there. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. I'm also an author. I wrote again, but better and better together. Links are in the description. <laughs> I'm losing my voice. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Um, I'm just gonna say something. No, I'm not.